Hi everybody. Happy Friday. We're doing it a little different today. Let's see how this works. I'm going to flip you around in a minute, but for right now, we're going to try this. Let's see if we can get everybody to join. As you know, Facebook Live is very persnickety. Hi, Susan. All right, so I know I'm live because I can see Susan. How's it going out there? Whoa, I'm going to spill my drink right on live Facebook. Wouldn't that be awful? So I'm going to start this doing it a little bit different today. I actually show you guys what I look like. I don't always do that, but why don't we do it today? I'm going to share the video real quick. Um, and then, okay. And then I will start seeing, let's see. Hi, you guys. Matea, I hope I said that right, from California. Patricia, Susan, you're at work. Lucky you that you have freedom to do that at work. That's good. Hopefully it makes work a little bit more enjoyable. I remember when I was a teacher, there were times when I was trying to watch things on Facebook too. I won't tell, I won't, I won't admit that because then that makes me sound like a bad teacher. There were times, right, happening. Are you guys still there? I don't know what the internet's doing. Hi, you guys. Hi, Vicki. All right, so tell me, it, it like did a weird flashing thing. Can you guys still see me? Okay, I'm going to assume that you can. Um, so today we're going to do Easter treats. I was going to do something else today, and then I realized Easter is like three weeks away. So I thought I better get on the Easter treats. Um, we're going to do three things. One with a little baby bunny, tiny bunny. Um, and then a little basket with a bunny from um, Garden Girl. And then this little bunny, which is really fun. I've had some requests for um, this bunny, which is like the bear, um, baby bear, which is three-step stamping. So we're going to do the um, Stamparatus again. I'm really enjoying my Stamparatus. It's, is it jumpy? Oh, I'm sorry, you guys. Hopefully it'll, it'll strengthen up. I don't know. You know, the stupid internet. You just never know. At least the recording, when I upload the recording when I'm done, it'll be HD, apparently, is what it's supposed to be. Okay, so before I get started, um, just to, I want to run down a few things. Not only is Easter three weeks away, but the end of celebration is only three weeks away. Celebration lasts January, February, and March. And celebration is the best time of the Stampin' Up! year because you always get something free with your $50 purchase. But it's also the best time to buy the starter kit. My team always grows by leaps and bounds during those three months because it's the best deal Plus, it's the best deal, right? It's always the best deal in the catalog because you get $125 of product of your choice for $99. But during celebration, you can then add on two stamp sets on top of that. So potentially, you're getting up to $200 for just $99. Um, but really, the, the really big benefit of buying that starter kit is what comes after you get your starter kit. Not only are you getting that box of goodies, you're, you're getting a discount after that. You get 20% off all your purchases after that. And potentially, you can then earn up to 25% and then volume rebates up to 38% you can be earning back as an income or a discount. So that, to me, that's why I do what I do is to earn some money. Um, a lot of us start out to pay for our Stamping Up habit, right? And that's really um, the benefit that comes. If you love Stamping Up products, it's really the benefit that comes with buying that starter kit. Um, but I also have um, a page on my blog. I don't know if you've ever seen it. If you go to pinkbuckaroo.com, up at the top I have some tabs. And one of them says join. And I printed it out. It looks like this. And I have all the benefits listed um, of buying the starter kit. Um, and there are some benefits that are particular to um, joining my team. And um, in particular, they have to do with the PDFs that I put out. Um, I think you guys know that I put out 
two to three PDFs every month, and my team always gets those for free. So if you're somebody who enjoys those PDFs, and if you purchase them from me every month, it might be a great idea to join my team so that you get those for free. Um, they also get my class kits, basically at cost every month. So that's another really good perk. Plus, we have a lot of fun. My team, um, we do a lot of fun challenges and celebrations um, and fun things together on our Facebook group. Most of us are spread out across the country. I live in South Texas, and I do have a small number of team members here in South Texas, but, but now we've really grown across the country, and so we really kind of have bonded through Facebook, which is kind of how everything is now, isn't it? So anyways, I um, there's Kara. She's on my team. We do have an amazing team, don't we, Kara? Um, so I just wanted to, again, remind you, if you've been thinking about joining, if you've been thinking about buying that starter kit, don't let Celebration go by without doing it because you can pick two extra stamp sets, which can be any price, you guys. And if you're like me, you're going to find the two most expensive stamp sets. It's okay. Stampin' Up! knows you're going to do that. Go buy the, you know, add in the alphabet stamp set. Add in those double stamp sets. Um, that's the whole point. They're really rewarding us as um, consumers of Stampin' Up! products during celebration. So look through the catalog and think about um, what you would add in and what you would like to get for just $99. Um, go to my blog, click on that. Um, I have a little gnat flying around. That's odd. Um, click on that join tab and, and read through those perks. Um, I'm not going to sit here and read them all to you. There's a ton. Um, and then email me and let me know if you have questions um, about it. I'm happy to answer anything. I'm not going to pressure you or, you know, um, make you feel weird for asking questions. I'm here to answer them. And, um, you know, we all started with questions, so I'm happy to answer them. Oh, there's Lisa, another one of my team members. Hi, Lisa. Okay, so um, the other reminder is that tomorrow is the last day to register for my Sunshine and Rainbows class to go. It looks like this. If I can hold it up like this. Seven projects. Ah, things are falling. Seven projects that all use the Sunshine and Rainbows bundle, which is so fun. These framelits are amazing. I'm going to be using these for years to come. You'll also get... Um, a celebration item of your choice if you buy the class kit that includes the bundle. And then, of course, you'll get all seven make and takes. Five of them are 3D projects, and um, two of them are fancy cards. Um, one is a shaker box. You'll get all seven of the make and takes delivered to you in the mail. And um, the PDF, the full color PDF, too. All four options include the full color PDF. There is an option that's just the PDF the option that includes a bundle, the option without the bundle, and then the option for my team. Hi everybody, thank you for joining me today. Um, if you want the details for that class, you can go over to my blog, pinkpuckroo.com. It's there on every post right now, it's at the bottom of the post. And then you'll have to email me for the registration link. I'm not allowed to post those um, per Stamping Up rules, so you'll have to email me for that link. Um, so email me at erica at pinkbuckroo.com and I'll send it over to you. But tomorrow is the last day. The last day, uh, the cutoff tomorrow. It turns off. And I've actually already been prepping those. So I'm hoping to ship them out quickly. Okay, so today, make sure I always have um, project sheets to go along with my projects. They look like this over on my blog. Um, I have all the materials and the product numbers and the measurements down at the bottom for you. If you go over to my blog right now, it should have posted live right at two o'clock and it'll have all the information for you. Save it, print it out. That way while you're watching today, you don't have to scribble down um, any information and then lose it on a post-it note, which is what I always do. I lose it, can't find it. Um, this way you have it. Um, and then on the last sheet, all the stuff that I've been talking to you about, those links are here too for you. And if you put in an order between now and Monday night and you use the hostess code that's on that paper, I'm going to send you today's make and takes. And this is kind of what they look like. This is one of the kits from a few weeks ago. They come like this in the mail and I mail them to you for free. So all three of them, they'll go out to you and I'll get those out hopefully pretty quickly next week. Um, little caveat on next week. I always get them out late Tuesday or early Wednesday the following week. 
this coming week my kids are going to be home for spring break and my parents are going to be here <laughs> visiting so it might be thursday please be patient with me next week but i know that they're time sensitive because they're going to be easter projects so i will be getting them out as quickly as possible so any order minimum thirty dollars and i will send you the make and take for free okay so you got to use that hostess code unless your order is over 150 dollars then you get the hostess rewards but i'll still send you the projects now last week I said I was going to give away four embossing folders and I have those winners. I've already emailed these ladies. So ladies, if this is you, please check your email. Jennifer Newell, Betty Schuler, Tiffany Weekly, and Shelby Laverack. Ladies, these are all those really cool um, thick embossing folders, the dynamic textured embossing folders. So I will be mailing those out to you early next week. Congratulations. Then I also said I would send a pack of cards, five cards, to four different people who shared this video, last week's video. And those four people, you're gonna have to email me because I don't have your email addresses. Um, or yeah, I don't have your email addresses or your mailing addresses, except for Janie, she's on my team. Janie, I have yours, so I'll mail yours. So if this is you, Lucy Schmidt, Lois Crandall, and Sharon Verity, please email me your address so I can send you a pack of cards as a thank you for sharing my video. So this week, if you share, I'm gonna pick two winners to get this um, um, sweet soiree, is that what it's called? Yes, yeah, sweet soiree embellishment kit. I have two. Oh, Shelby, good, you're there. Send me a, an email, okay, with your address. Um, so share this video, you guys, and I will pick two winners next week to, and I will send these out, these cool, really cool embellishment kits, okay? And then the other thing um, to win is to go over to my blog post, and there's a widget at the bottom, and you just enter your name, your email address, and you can win one of these stamp sets next week. Okay, so there's two ways to win. Share the video and go over to my blog and enter your email address. All right, now if you go over and enter your email address, tell me which one you want. Do you want flying home or in the trees? Which one do you want? Let me know, or either, if you don't care. You'll take either one. Maybe you don't have either one, so let me know, okay? All right, last thing. If you spend $50 with me in March, you're gonna get this um, giant all-star tutorial bundle. It's 63 pages, don't forget. Bump your orders up in March to $50. Not only are you gonna get a free celebration item, but you're gonna get this PDF. And I haven't mailed them out this week, guys, so don't worry, I'll do that as soon as the video's over. Okay, now here comes the tricky part. I'm gonna turn this video around, and I'm gonna mount you guys up here. <laughs> Hopefully I don't turn the video off. We'll see how that works. If I happen to like end the video, which is probably a 50-50% chance that I'm going to do that, I'll just restart it, okay? So don't panic. Don't freak out. I will start the video over in a new video. You'll have to find me again in a new video, okay? Because I want to show you these great projects. All right, so here we go. Now I'm going to flip you guys, if it'll let me. You can see my office. It's kind of a mess. Don't look at my mess. And then, ooh, there I am. That's how I see your comments. And I'm, this is the tricky part when I have to mount you right here without hitting any of the side buttons. You know, there should be an easier way to do this. There probably is. And I have to make sure that you're straight and that I can see you and that you can see everything. Ooh, I think I did it. You guys still there? Now I have to plug my phone in so it doesn't die. Because I don't, my phone, I have a, a phone that is an iPhone 6, which now is pretty old, and it won't last. The stupid battery will not last long enough for me to do a live video anymore. So that's one of the tasks over spring break is to go get the new iPhone, which I do not want to do. However, they trap us, don't they? They force us. Okay. I thought I turned the fan on, give me a sec, or I'm gonna die of heat. All right, so the first project we're gonna make is this cute little basket. Are you guys still there with me? Hopefully I didn't make you nauseous. Oh yeah, you're still there, okay. All right, hello Maxie from Germany. 
Hello. Hi, Belinda from kindergarten. My kindergarten buddy. Okay. Here's my tray for this project. So I pulled out all my stamps and I decided not to use the Hello Easter stamp set for any of these Easter projects because I designed an Easter class with that stamp set and I'm kind of over it. I really kind of, the well was dry. I really did not think I could come up with anything else. So I pulled out other stamp sets with Easter, with bunnies and, and that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna use this little bunny. This is called Garden Girl. She's in the annual catalog and she's one of my favorites from the very beginning because I have three little girls and I have a bunny. So of course, <laughs> this is my one of my favorites. And I really haven't used it that much. So I was excited to, to use it. And then we're gonna use this one and I'm actually gonna use, um, wait, is that, no, I'm using Hip Hop Hooray, um, which I thought was cute. And um, we're gonna use Happy Easter when we use this bunny. Um, another thing that we're using is this framelit. This is the, the Picnic Basket Builder Framelits. And these are from the Occasions Catalog. Um, and I have had, I hear you. You guys are telling me you want me to do some things with this. So I hear you. I, I'm processing, I'm thinking, um, and it's coming. So hopefully, um, maybe next month or at the end of the month, I'll have some projects for Facebook Friday for this. Um, so we're gonna use the little grass. This is a great little framelit set, little cups, little goblets, um, basket, I don't know, it's cute. So anyway, we're gonna use the grass from here. All right, so let's just make the basket first. And this is a really interesting basket. It is not my original design. I found it a long time ago on Pinterest. I don't even remember who it was and it was like, literally from 10 years ago, it was super old. Um, now remember, over here, I even have to look at my notes, over here on this sheet, which is on my blog, um, the measurements are right here, okay? The score lines are right here. So this is a six by six piece of crumb cake, and we're gonna score it at two and four, and then turn it and score it at two and four again. Now, this, this box reminds me of like way back before we, had um you know big shot and stuff because it's really simple now you're going to cut all the corners off from the score line to the score line so corner to corner yeah just a heads up that the <laughs> ups man is due here any minute so the dogs are like waiting with bated breath they, um, they just know, they know he's coming. Okay, so I cut off all the corners. Okay, good, they went in the backyard. And I'm gonna cut up on this score line right here and right here. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. Had I thought about it, I would have put them up, but I did not think about it. Now, this is what we have right now. We're gonna cut this off about halfway down, maybe a little bit less than halfway down. Yeah, that's probably a little bit less. See how this is just kind of really basic. Now let's fold all these score lines and we're gonna put adhesive right here and right here. I'm gonna fold this one in here and this one here and then I'm gonna put some more adhesive here and some more adhesive here. I had somebody last night tell me at my card class that all of her projects, her boxes and stuff that she's making, see how I'm folding this one, just folding it over? All of her projects she's making are cu are coming apart. And that's because she, you, I told her she's not using a strong enough adhesive. So make sure if they're coming apart, you're not using the strong, a strong enough adhesive. So use um, fast fuse or tear and tape, okay? Snail is not gonna cut it. Um, I don't use Tombow liquid just because I don't like liquid glue, but I know that that will work too. Um, so anyway, there's her little basket. It looks kind of funky right now, but we're not done. We're gonna take this little piece of crumb cake. It's just um, half an inch, did I put this on here? Nope, half an inch by eight, I believe. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of adhesive there on that end and a little bit of adhesive there on that end and put it on the inside. And there you have it. Isn't that kind of cute? I just love it. All right, now I just put some, you know, 
some of that shreddy in there. And I have these in here. I've had to rid my office of all candy um, because I have started a new diet last Friday. And these I don't, I don't really like. So these stayed here. <laughs> that's why they're in here. Otherwise, there would be something really good in here. Um, but that's, I think they would fit an Easter egg perfectly or, you know, the Cadbury eggs that have all the weird gooey stuff inside. They would fit perfectly too. All right, so now let's stamp our little rabbit. In case you don't know, I have a rabbit. We have a rabbit as a family. Um, she is a Californian, and she was my oldest daughter's uh, 4-H or FFA rabbit last year. Um, and she was the smallest of the group that we got, and so she didn't make her weight, so she was like the reject. Um, and so, pause on the story. I had to use Memento Black because I'm coloring it with a blend. The, you have to use this ink if you're going to use these blends. Otherwise, it'll smear. So, the girls, all three of my girls, were in love with her. She was tiny and cute and adorable. Um, so, I said, fine, we can keep her. Well, she grew into a 10-pound giant monster rabbit who is not this cute anymore. And she hates all of us. But she now lives here against her will, gets fed handfuls of Brussels sprouts and strawberries and hates us. She hates our guts. I don't know why. We have um, a wrought iron fence in our backyards and then a green belt behind us, kind of like, you know, the woods. Um, but then there's houses on the other side of the woods. So it's not really the woods. We had to put wire all along the fence because she could fit through the, the wrought iron. Well, she stares out the wrought iron longingly into the green belt every day like how she just is so miserable living in our backyard I don't know she's just a hot mess and uh she's not as sweet and cute as she was this time last year I can tell you that <laughs> anyways I still love her she's she's still you know fluffy and kind of cute anyways I stamped the sentiment in powder pink and just on a skinny strip of whisper white and I'm going to cut a V, but first I'm going to cut a line in the middle, and I'm going to cut the V up to the line. We're thinking about getting a another rabbit. I know, I'm crazy. Another rabbit because we think she's lonely. But the problem with buying another rabbit is that they'll fight and fight to the death, which is kind of a problem. So we really kind of don't know what to do you have to socialize them it's just the most stupidest thing ever that we've ever done as parents why did we keep this rabbit I don't know because they can live like 10 years I don't know if you have if you have rabbit advice please offer it up I'd love to hear it all right so here's this grass that I cut out of lemon lime twist from the picnic basket um, builder and I'm just gonna add it down here I'm gonna put a couple of little glue dots She used to live in the house. We call her Bun Bun. Her real name is Stella, but we call her Bun Bun. She used to live in the house, but then she realized that the dogs were going through the doggy door and she thought, oh, well, duh, I'm gonna do that. And then she likes the outside way more than the doggy door. So she goes outside. She comes inside occasionally, but she prefers the outside. When it gets hot here in the summer, I think she'll probably stay inside more. But if we bring her inside, she prefers to go back outside. All right, so there we go. That's through my story. I hope you were able to see what I was doing. I stacked, this is the second smallest stitched square stacked on the a scallop square that's just a tiny bit bigger. And I layered them all with Stampin' Dimensionals. I didn't tell you any of that because I was just chatting away about our silly rabbit. I can see what you're telling me, Emily. And we have two giant dogs that live next door, but they mostly live inside the house. Um, I, you know, I don't know, one day, circle of life, I'm not sure. And we have two schnauzers um, who want to want to kill her, I think, but they're kind of scared of her. My husband swears he saw her like drop kick them one day, like jump up and kick them with their back legs. And now they run up to her and then just kind of like run to the side. I don't know. They, she, they're not really, she's not really scared of them. 
It's the most bizarre relationship you've ever seen. I'm not sure. Rabbits, who knew? Who knew that they were so much, so much work and so much problem? A little cute lemon lime twist. This is the many twist, um, lemon lime twist, many striped ribbon. It has six words in the title. Um, and I just tied a little bow and put it on there. And there you have it. These would be wonderful if you needed to make like 20 because they were so, this was such an easy project. Um, I didn't really even have to tell you much as I went through it. Um, not a lot of coloring. All I did was color in the inside of his ear and you're done. So there you go. Uh, wouldn't these be cute sitting on your table for Easter? Um, a little treat for everybody. All right, what do you guys think? So cute, I love it. All right, project number one done. All right, moving on. Let me make some space. Um, I had made this to remind myself in case you need to see. This is how I cut that paper. That's what it looks like. Thank you for the hearts and the, and the thumbs up. That really does help me because then I do know that you're... You're with me and I'm not just talking nonsense. So thank you. All right, project number two is, let me get a drink, I'm so thirsty right now. I'm not sure why. Okay, so project number two kind of evolved from what I had originally planned. It just kind of changed and changed and changed. Inside here are these Russell Stover caramel eggs and again, I don't like caramel in my chocolate, so that's why they're here, because I'm not tempted by these. But I think this is the same size as like the little Snicker ones, the little Twix ones, you know, um, the peanut butter, the Reese's peanut butter ones, which would not survive in my office, because I would eat them. And so two of them fit in here. I know you guys always like to know exactly what fits in here. So that's what this is, okay? Um, let's make the holder first. This is powder pink cardstock, and it is two by 11, and I'm gonna score it at four and three fourths and six and a fourth, okay? So four and three fourths and six and a fourth. Now when I first made this, remember you guys don't feel like you have to write all this down. It's over there on that project sheet on my blog. When I first made this project, I did not emboss it. And then I was like, oh, wait, this would be really, really cute with that basket weave embossing folder, right? Which is what everybody's going crazy over this basket weave embossing folder. I mean, crazy. Um, it's in the second release, the second celebration release, if you haven't seen it. it looks like this. I made an apple pie with it a few weeks ago. Um... And it's just super cute. Luckily, we have been told that it will carry over into the annual catalog next year. It does come in um, as a bundle. You can only get it as a bundle right now when you spend $100. $100. So it's a level two. Um, and, but then you get a stamp, a really cute basket stamp set with it. Um, so just know that. And if you uh, can't spend $100 right now, just know that it will be carrying over into the annual catalog for uh, a purchase. You can actually buy it next year. So anyway, but if you have it or if you're going to spend $100, this is a good one to get. Now, the first time I did it, I folded it like this and I put it in and I embossed it. And then I realized that's very beautiful. But then the back side. That's not very beautiful because that was the back side. The inside part was the basket part. So then I thought, okay, well, we're gonna have to do it differently. So I'm gonna stick this in. And honestly, I probably wouldn't care, but let's do it perfectly, okay? So let's put it in, stick it in like that and emboss it. I stuck it up just to that score line. All right, let me scoot it down so you can see. And now I'm just gonna turn it and keep it same, you know, face up and stick it down to that neck, that same score line and emboss it again. That way the basket weave will be on the outside. Like that funky back will be on the inside. You won't really see it. So that and that, perfect. All right. So there is that. 
let's see, do I need this again? I don't think I do, so I'm gonna put this down here. And I realized that I did not pull out this punch, which is what we need for this, the scallop tag topper punch, which is just really a staple in my opinion. You gotta have this punch. It makes the perfect little tag topper. All right, next you're gonna need two pieces of powder pink that's two, they're two and a half by two and a half. And we're gonna score each of them at half an inch. And I'm looking at my own notes, half an inch and two inches. Then turn it and score it at half an inch. Okay, so do one and then do the other one the same way. Half an inch and two inches, turn it and half an inch. I have gold glitter on everything. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's on my Simply Scored, it's on my Big Shot. I have been doing some glimmer paper for my Sunshine and Rainbows class. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm cutting this square out, but I'm actually cutting it kind of at an angle. See how I did that? I actually cut, cut off the square, but I'm cutting each of those little tabs at an angle. So what I'm doing in just one step is cut off the square and then snip that and snip that. Okay, so you can really just do it in one step. Cut in at an angle, cut it in at an angle. All right. So before I forget, I'm gonna put adhesive right here and right here. Before I forget to tell you, oh goodness, I did an awful job with that adhesive. My kids have spring break starting today at three o'clock. See how I'm matching these up? Did I not score that right? That is totally wrong. You know, I scored these totally wrong. My measurements are wrong, you guys. I'm gonna have to fix that on the sheet. Hmm. All right, well, I'm gonna make it work for now, but I'm gonna have to go and fix that sheet. I don't know which one I scored wrong, but these score lines should match up, and they don't. <sighs> it's been that kind of week. Anyways, my kids start spring break um, today, this afternoon. So, I'm planning on doing Facebook Friday next Friday, tentatively. All right, see how I'm folding these up? It'll be better when I fix those score lines for you guys on the PDF. I don't know what I did. I think I scored the first one wrong. But just be patient with me next week. I'm not sure how that's gonna go within here. All right, so when you score your guys, they'll be much better. Well, maybe I did, maybe it just didn't. Maybe I embossed it too far. I don't know, I'll look at that. That's how it's supposed to look. Hmm. All right, well, it worked out. I'll check those score lines. So next week is up in the air. I have I have my three projects already planned for next week. However, with kids, you never know. All right, so we're gonna take some powder pink ribbon and I'm just gonna take a clip to help me do this. I'm gonna pinch it closed and I'm gonna take this, this um, super cute powder pink woven ribbon I know it does, right, Trisha? It's very cute. That embossing folder just cannot be beat. All right, so I have thread that through both holes like that, and I'm pinching it closed with that um, little clip to help me tie these together. Otherwise, it's a little bit tricky. Well, it is tricky. And then I'm gonna take some white. Go ahead and put your candy in there first. I don't have any more candy to put in here for you guys. Because like I said, there was a big purge here at the house last week because I had to just get control of the sugar monster that's living inside of me. And we no longer have sugar in the house. Well, that's a lie. In my office, we don't have sugar. All right, so I tied those together like that with some white baker's twine. There we go. All right, so pretend the candy is in there like that one. All right, let's make the cute little tag. I've already cut the round circle, which is the stitched, the second smallest 
smallest stitch circle that's like a tongue twister and I am using the itty bitty tiny cute bunny from a good day this is such a good set it's in the occasions catalog on the page it has the little tiny um, oh, what are they called the um, wood uh, why can't I think of the name you know the little needle point hoops what are they called somebody somebody say it I can't remember the hoops the I don't know I can't remember I'm drawing a blank it's lack of carbs you guys I'm telling you lack of sugar all right so I'm I am um, stamping him in memento black lack of sugar it's what it does to you embroidery hoops Trisha you win the prize thank you yes all right now he's so tiny and my eyes aren't working like I'm telling you lack of sugar I'm just barely gonna go in there with that um, this is the pink pirouette dark and then I'm gonna do his bow my neighbor is in his yard and he's looking at me who is she talking to we have new neighbors I probably need to explain all right there we go embroidery hoop embroidery hoop is that, yeah is that what we said embroidery hoop you all said it thank you isn't it funny when you get like you just can't think of it my 15 year old daughter did that this is the one in the fourth inch circle my 15 year old daughter did that the other day and she just could not think of it and I was like oh honey you're making mama feel so much better your little young 15 year old brain is doing the same thing this is the one and three eight scallop circle on the same page as the embroidery hoops too and it's going to layer just barely you'll notice today there's a theme white on white I've done it on all three projects a white circle with a white scallop in the back it's classy it's sophisticated and it's perfect for Easter it's just sweet and I love it all right now another dimensional you'll notice I did not put a sentiment on here mainly because I couldn't make one look right I didn't like the way it looked I could have added something down here but I didn't like it but if you make this project maybe you can find a way to add it you know I think if you did just kind of like the one we're gonna do next this one just down here if you wanted to it would be cute but I think it's fine without it too oh, so cute and if you didn't want this to be Easter look at all the little things you could substitute you could do exactly the same thing but you could even do this just because and then you're good with your sentiment you don't need to add anything else just for you the little lemonade I mean so cute right you could do all of them all of them would fit okay number yay thank you for the hearts and the thumbs up project number two all right done I hope you guys like it let me clear some space it seems like there was something on this project that I need for the next project ah, okay one more now this one I'm excited about I will be the first to tell you that baby bear you guys know who baby bear is He's this little bunny's cousin in the annual catalog. I'll be the first to admit he wasn't my favorite. When he was released in the annual catalog, people lost their minds. They went crazy. They fell in love. And I was like, meh, he's all right. And then this one came out, and I was like, well, he's cute. It's a bunny, so I have to get it. Well, then I played with it, and I fell in love. So cute. So then, you might have seen um, earlier this week, I posted a picture of some treats that I made for a friend who is giving her daughter a shower who's having twins. She, the theme, of course, is teddy bear. So I'm like, well, I guess I have to order baby bear. And I did, and now I love him. He's so cute. So I am now officially on board with the, the baby bear and the bunny or whatever, the sweet little bunny. They're all super cute. I don't know. I just It took me a while to warm up. But I'm there. So I'm using the Stamparatus. If you are not familiar with the Stamparatus, let me tell you about this lovely piece of equipment. This is a stamp positioning tool, and I can see how dirty it is. I don't know if you guys can see. Um, a stamp positioning tool designed in part by Stampin' Up! Demonstrators. 
um, which I was so lucky to be a part of. It took like, I don't know, like five years. I mean, it took forever. Um, we really helped all along the way um, and it was really exciting. And um, it came out um, in December and you had to pre-order it because they've never made them before and they could only make so many. So there were pre-order windows and the, the last pre-order window closed in December. So if you didn't pre-order, you can't order it again until June. So, sorry. I mean, I, it, it's just one of those things that they can't make enough. They physically, the manufacturer can't make enough to keep up with making a million of them. You know, I mean, just physically not possible. But if you want one, don't worry. June is just around the corner and it's coming. So I'm trying to use it as much as I can just to show you how exciting it is um, because I love it and it is similar you'll see some similarities to other stamp positioning tools um, and then you'll see some some differences I mean there's some big differences like the fact that it has two plates all right so um, this stamp set is a photopolymer which means the stamps are completely see-through you can see through them and one tip that I've seen people doing is to take your um, stamp case and put it under over your, your under your your little um, plate over here to make it like flat for inking. I thought that was a good idea. Um, I'm going to use a full big piece of paper here just to kind of give me enough room to use my magnets because I'm using both magnets, and um, I'm sure you've heard the magnets are super duper strong. They're called rare earth magnets. And they are so strong that they jump together and shatter. A lot of them have. And I'm really nervous about using both of them. So I only use one at a time. Um, except for some of these really big photopolymer sets. And for this set, I have to use both of them. My magnets are wrapped in washi, which helps keep them um, kind of separated. And um, mine have actually snapped together a couple of times, but they didn't shatter. I don't know if it if the washi saved them or not, or if I just got lucky. But anyway, just know that it happens. It's just the, the strength of the magnet. All right, so another thing when I first started using, when I first tried this stamp, um, the stamp was pulling the paper up off the platform. Um, and I realized it was because of, it was a new stamp and it was super sticky. I don't know if you guys have noticed when your photopolymer stamps come, sometimes they're really sticky. Um, so I noticed after I used it a few times, that kind of stopped. Um, so if you have that problem, wash it, ink it, stamp it, and then try it again. Um, and, and it kind of wears down on that stickiness. Okay, so we're going to start with the more detailed image um, first. So we're kind of going backwards. I was starting here first before and I realized I need to start here first and I'm going to just kind of set it over here. You kind of want to work away from the hinges because the hinges are lifted a little and it's a little bit harder to get in contact especially with a photopolymer which are thinner. So work kind of towards the center. Um, another tip, another thing that you have to know when you use a photopolymer is that you need to use this part. This comes with it um, because the red rubber stamps already have this on them, which creates a thickness, and these don't. So you have to kind of add, you have, I don't know why I say kind of, you have to add that to the bottom. Okay, so put it where you want it and then push down on your, on your plate and see it did pull the paper up a little bit but because I put the paper in the corner I'm just going to slide it right back I know exactly where it goes all right we're going to start with the darkest ink first which is this time soft suede I'm going to stamp it push it down there we go now I'm going to just take this plate off isn't that magic it just pops right off and I'm going to take the next one and I'm going to make sure my paper's there um, line this up and you can kind of see like where the nose is and where the arm and leg line up it's much easier to do this than try to ink it and then lay it on there and hope for the best um, now this one I'm gonna do crumb cake you want to go from your darkest ink to the lightest so I'm going soft suede and then crumb cake, and I made a mess there. And the next I'm gonna do crumb cake, but I'm actually gonna stamp off a layer. All right, now I'm gonna take that plate off. 
And I told you guys to put that over there, and I put it under the wrong one, didn't I? All right, and then the last one, which is kind of the solid shadow. This is the one that was really giving me trouble pulling up the paper. There we go. But if you keep your paper there in the corner, you shouldn't have any trouble. Now, crumb cake again, but to make it a lighter crumb cake, I'm gonna stamp it first on scratch paper, like that, and then stamp it on my bunny so it's light. And there you have it. Isn't she cute? She's very cute. Oh, I just love her. All right. It's very easy. And you know, if you keep your stamps there on your plates and you need to make 40, like I did of Baby Bear, you just stamp, move over paper, stamp, move over paper. It's just like mass production. You just can just, you know, keep going over and over and everything's in the same place when you're stamping. It makes it much easier. All right, I'm not reading y'all's comments, I'm sorry. I should be reading your comments. While I'm cutting baby, bu baby Bunny or whatever her name is out, I'll, I'll see. You covered your magnets like I did. Yes, you use ladies duct tape? More durable than washi. What is ladies duct tape? Is that something different or is that a typo? Now I'm cutting little, we'll call her Bun Bun because that's our bunny's name. I'm cutting Bun Bun out. Um, there is no framelit. Boo, hiss, I know. She needs a framelit. But we don't have one, so we have to revert to our kindergarten cutting skills. Use your fine tip scissors and go around, leaving just a thin white mat around. You know, my magnets look ridiculous and messy and awful, and I really should do a better job because I've been watching some other videos, and yes, People have done a much better job covering theirs. That's pretty par for the course for me. I just do things super fast to get them over with. <laughs> I don't do things nice and neat. Pattern duct tape. Oh yes, Karen, I know what you're talking about. We have a ton of pattern duct tape upstairs in my girl's room. They love that stuff. I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, so like I told you, lots of white on white today. I lost my dimensionals. They're probably on one of these trays. No. Oh, goodness. There they are, under my iPad. All right, so two dimensionals on the scallop circle, the stitch circle. I think that the stitched shape framelits should be in anybody's first order after they buy the big shot because they are amazing and then after that you should start collecting the layering framelits the layering circle the la layering squares the layering um, ovals because they're the best okay so now let's make the little um the little tag and I thought I had cut this out already but I guess I didn't let's just use this little paper the little tag did I not cut this out you know, we're gonna skip this because I don't even, I didn't even grab the framelit. The framelit I used on here is from the, I put it in the supply list. It's the, um, oh, you can tell it's getting late. It is called Bunch of Banners Framelit. So we're gonna leave it off this time so that I can show you how to make this. But Happy Easter, powder pink, white, smallest banner. Dimensional. Super easy. All right, now this little gift bag is fun. It's like a like a little lunch sack. This is the, what do we call this paper? Fresh Florals Designer Series paper. It's all the end colors. And it is six by nine. And you're gonna score it at three and four and seven and eight. And then we're gonna turn it and score it at just Half an inch, hmm, that doesn't sound right. Half an inch, I bet I meant one and a half. Let's see. Erica, what did you mean? You meant, you meant one inch. I'm gonna have a lot to fix, aren't I? Don't score it at half an inch, score it at one inch, you guys. See what happens when I take sugar out of my life? It's a problem. All kinds of mistakes. 
All right, we're going to cut that score or cut that square out right there. And then we're just going to burnish these lines. All these lines and we're going to fold it so that it looks like this. See where I'm going with this? So let's put some adhesive on here. You guys are going to have to give me about 10 minutes after I finish and I will have corrected those videos. Oh, I forgot. Cut these score lines right here. And fold in. It's just your standard box bottom. A little adhesive. Now I used a different pattern of designer series paper from this one. See? And what I did, I couldn't decide how I wanted to close it, but what I did is I pinched it and I just folded it over like a lunch sack. That's all I did. Look, it's like a lunch sack. And I didn't even do a clip or anything. I just folded it. I thought that was pretty cute. Right? Pretty cute. All right, so let's put little baby bun bun on there. Again, with the dimensionals, they're, they're gone right here I need you know what I should make oh this this is what I should invent and I bet you guys would buy this you know how sewers people who sew and quilters have the the wrist thing where you put the needles I need one of those for dimensionals I should invent that okay right, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go apply for a patent as soon as we're done <laughs> that's what I need because I'm always looking for my dimensionals and glue dots a little little bracelet that holds dimensionals and glue dots. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I wonder if somebody's already invented that. It's actually a really smart idea. And that is a good idea. And I'm not even eating sugar today. All right. And I just kind of put this little cute little bow, like a big, you know, like a little girl's bow. Like a big, cute, fruity bow. Oh, so cute. And what did I put in here? I don't know. I think you could put anything in here. Oh, you know what fits perfect? Ooh, I didn't know I had these. I love these. These, um, those Cadbury, oh. Yeah, I'm gonna have to really, I'm gonna have to staple that shut. All right, project number three. What do you guys think? I closed my iPad. I can't see. Hold on, I gotta open it. All right, project number three. I was a little bit of a hot mess today. Let's review and see all of our projects. You know, I'm a teacher. I have to review. I don't know where all our projects went. Hmm. Well, here's two of the projects. I don't even remember where the third one went. The first one. Oh, they're right over here. All right. These are going to go to school. I think the teachers will like them. All right, you guys. Let's see. Ah, oh, cute bunny. Thanks. Y'all are so funny. All three. So easy and cute. Thank you. You don't like the bear, the bunny, Kim? You know, I think people either love the bunny and the bear or they detest them. And I will tell you that I was on that detest side. I was like, that's not my thing. But then I got the bunny and the bear and I really like them. They're, they're funny. They're cute. And I, I don't know. I don't know. I like them. Um... So just to remind you guys, I'm kind of looking back to see if you have questions. Um, I see some of you are getting your Stamparatus very soon. I don't know. Did I even say it was called Stamparatus? Um, Joy, you're the same, huh? Um, just to remind you, here's the, the hostess code for this week. It's a new hostess code. If you use it um, and your order is $30, Minimum $30, you'll get all three make-and-take packs um, for free in the mail. And I'm trying to read and talk at the same time, which is not a good idea. If you bump it to $50, you also get the All-Star Tutorial Bundle and a celebration item. And if you bump it to $100, you can get that embossing folder, which, you know, I think I would probably do that if, if I was me. Um... 
You guys are so sweet. Thank you so much for the encouragement. I do appreciate it. It's not easy being live. I don't know how many of you have done it before. I've been doing it for over a year now, and it never gets easier. It's a little, um, it's a little intimidating, to say the least. And I do really, really appreciate all of you tuning in. Don't forget to share the video to your friends or to your pages, to your groups, because I'll be choosing some winners next week. Hopefully next week my kids will allow me to, <laughs> to be live without any catastrophes. Thank you, Joy. Thank you so much. All right, you guys, have a great weekend. Hopefully you'll have some spring weather, and I hopefully will see you on next Friday. All right, thanks. Let me know if you have questions. Bye-bye.